Hey, this is Bill DC with CCW USA. I'm here with Tactical Hive. We're at the Glock store in San Diego. I want to talk about some different draws from concealment, different shooting positions, different carry positions, and how to effectively and safely draw your gun from the holster. Our four basic safety rules are always applied anytime we're training, anytime we're practicing, anytime we're on the range, and anytime we have a gun in our hand. Treat the gun as if it's loaded. All guns are always loaded. Treat them as such at all times. Keep the gun pointed in a safe direction, away from yourself, away from any part of your own body, and away from anybody else. Keep your finger straight alongside the frame, off the trigger, outside the trigger guard. Really critical when we're drawing, one of the most dangerous times when practicing with firearms is the draw and the reholster. So we really want to make sure we get it right before we start drawing and reholstering. In fact, one of the things I would encourage you to do is practice this dry without any clothing garment, any cover garment first, just to get the draw stroke down, just to get the motions down. Then incorporate your clothing garment uh, so you don't get it caught. So a couple of things we want to avoid are getting caught up or uh, getting hung up on the clothing garment. And then when we draw the gun out, it gets hooked or gets stuck on the gun. It can cause the gun to whip out to the side. It can cause the gun to come out of your hand as we're coming out of the holster. A good way we practice with new students is using blue guns to start with. So they're not even using a live gun or an actual firearm. They're using a blue gun with that initial training. So you're getting used to the motion. You're building those neuro pathways that tell you, this is where my clothing has to go. This is where my gun goes, my hand goes onto the gun. This is where my hand comes up, finger straight alongside the frame. As I clear the holster, rotating up, pressing out onto the target. On that front sight. Back to compress ready here. Maybe I'm scanning and assessing. And then back to the holster. Slowly back to the holster. Remember, we're not doing this quick. This is just coming back to here. I want to make sure if I don't clear my clothing, I come back here, I can get my clothing caught in the holster. Or I could get my either my undershirt here or my regular outer shirt caught in that holster and it could pinch inside the holster, could get inside the trigger guard, could potentially cause a discharge inside the holster. Uh, something we definitely want to avoid. So make sure clothing's out of the way, fingers straight, back to that high elbow, slowly back to the holster. And just do it slow. You gotta emphasize safety. This is an opportunity to cause a serious injury if we don't do it correctly. So make sure you do this dry as much as possible before you actually go to live drawing. And also don't focus on speed. Focus on smoothness and technique initially. We can always build speed later. As you build up that speed, do it gradually. We're not trying to go as fast as you can. You're trying to build smoothness and that smoothness will translate into speed later on. Initially, one of my favorite draw positions is strong side hip or right on the side here. So our concealed gun is off to the side at an angle. It could be at right on the side at 3 o'clock, could be 4 o'clock, could be 3.30, whatever's comfortable for you. You've got to set up your gear so that it works for you. So when I access my firearm, I can do it with the strong hand on, on the strong side or I can do it with the support side. Again, it depends on the type of shirt you're wearing, the type of clothing. You want something with a flexible fabric, or in this case, this shirt has snaps, so it can open up if it needs to. Uh, it's going to be a little more flexible. Regular t-shirts are fine as well, uh, but sometimes you don't, you don't want to wear a really tight shirt or anything that's going to get caught on your gun. So when I, when I draw, I'm clearing high and past the holstered gun and then coming down on it. If I draw, if I'm clearing my garment with this hand, I'm going to bring it up again high, close to the body, access the gun at the same time. The accessing of the gun can be done either with either hand or either arm, depending on your particular body type, depending on the type of clothing you're wearing and the position of the gun. On the strong side hip or just a little bit back from the, the mid seam of your leg, you can usually access it with either this hand or this hand to access the gun, get on the gun. This is a little bit more positive to use the opposite hand because I'm out of the way here. Gun, the shirt's completely out of the way for drawing and bringing the gun up on target. A real popular method of carry right now is appendix carry. This is one of those situations where you really want to be safe. You got to be switched on. You got to follow the safety rules just like any other carry position. It's just we got a little higher risk here. We're pointing the gun in a direction south that could be very uncomfortable if we're to discharge a gun in a southerly direction. 
So I want to make sure when I, when I position this holster that I get it positioned either on the side here. Some people carry it over on this side. Really personal preference where you're going to put the gun and where you're going to put the holster. A couple of good safety tips starting out. First time you're doing this, obviously, no ammunition, uh, unloaded gun or a blue gun. Also, for practice, I could take the holster off. I can do, undo my clip, put the gun in the holster, and then put the holster on and lock in that clip. Make sure that's locked on your belt. Another critical element of appendix or any holster carry is that we have a good quality belt that's rigid that's going to hold the gun in place. It's not a, a belt that's just going to hold the gun. It's going to flop around a lot. Also, I need to tighten it up a little bit so it holds it in the same position. So I'm getting that repetitive draw stroke, building those neuro pathways of going to my gun, drawing it out. When I get to appendix carry, I've got that same option. I can come straight up with this hand and come down on the gun, or I can come straight up with this hand and come down on the gun at the same time. A lot of times what I like to do is left hand clears the clothing garment, right hand draws the gun to high ready, high compress ready right here. Hands joined together, I let go of the clothing, press out to your target. Again, scanning and assessing, compress ready, scanning and assessing the immediate area. Clearing that clothing, pulling it really high up so the shirt's not going to get caught in your holster. Back down to here, I'll tap against the holster, make sure I'm at the exact spot where that holster is. Up and slowly straight down, fingers straight as we're going into the holster. If your gun has any kind of a safety engagement on it, it's got a thumb safety, anything like that, when I come back to, to reholster, I want to make sure that safety is engaged. 1911s especially, very light trigger press. Uh, any concealed carry gun that has a manual safety that it needs to be engaged, I would engage that safety prior to bringing it back to the holster and slowly into the holster. Practice doing this slow and smooth. Boom, up on target, press out to the target. When you actually put it to speed, either under a timer or in the real world, you're going to speed up. You're not, nobody's going to do it slow. Uh, practicing fast just makes you sloppy. So practice smooth and slow. Now we're going to talk a little bit about different carry methods like ankle carry. Not one of my favorite preferred methods, but I have used it before when carrying a backup gun. So a secondary gun or a third gun that you're carrying could be carried in an ankle holster. Keep in mind, it's usually going to be a more compact firearm. It's got to be something small and it's not going to be as accessible. You're not going to be able to get to it as quickly, but you will be able to access it. A lot of times uh, fights start with confrontations or verbal confrontation and that could escalate to where you're knocked down on the ground or you're in a different position than you would normally draw your firearm from. That's where an ankle holster might come in. Not that I'm anticipating or expecting to be knocked down on the ground. It could happen. Uh, drawing from an ankle holster while standing can be really difficult. So a lot of times what I'll recommend is going to a kneeling position, pulling up that that pant leg to access your firearm, defeating any safety mechanisms, drawing the gun up, and then shooting from a kneeling position. That's going to give me a better chance of uh, getting access to the gun, but it does minimize my mobility. Reholstering, same thing. Finger straight, slowly back into the holster, and then engage any safety straps or safety mechanisms for that particular holster covering up the holster. Today we talked about different methods of concealment, how to conceal your firearm, how to draw from that concealed position, whether it's strong side hip, appendix carry, or from an ankle holster. Uh, you need to experiment to see what works for you and what's going to be more effective based on your lifestyle, type of clothing you're normally wearing, and how you're going to access that gun. And practice, be repetitive about your practice. So you do it over and over, slowly. I'm Bill DC coming to you from CCW USA here at the Glock store in San Diego. Visit us on Tactical Hive. We'll answer all your questions and get you spun up on your guns and gear.